Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another Hewlett Packard. I kind of like Hewlett Packard. They're always a lot of fun and some really good, good, clever quality design. So this one is a 651A test oscillator and it covers from 10 hertz to 10 megahertz in 10 bands and um, quite a lot of output plus 20 dBm by the way so there's a lot of output drive in this thing and uh, my friendly sponsors who came with this one yesterday so thanks a lot guys uh, told me it's not working they had the lid off and looked a little bit around and didn't see anything smoked or anything like that, but they said it's better give it to me and I can have a little bit of fun. Maybe I can repair it. The first thing I see here on the back is this power entry modification. And I kind of like that one. A nice IEC connector. We can also look a little bit on the Germany, I think this one is right. And because it's zero zero here, that means it's from 1965. And then they count up from there, I think. This is of course something we can look up, by the way. It is so beautiful, at least here from the top tiny little transformer all the way to the back but no shielding no i mean really no walls or anything and then you have this huge variable capacitor here it is very very big And it looks like we're only using the first section. Look at that. No connection to those two. So only the first section. That's interesting. Why would they use this part number? I mean, it's just huge compared to what they need. That I find a little bit weird. And then the oscillator winding. Or the, this is the loop. It's just hanging all the way up here. Down here is the chassis of this capacitor. And it's also isolated. Everything here is isolated. But it's just a big chunk of pickup noise. And then this transformer with a little magnetic field. And this yeah, capacitor is there. Outside of the capacitors, they are, of course, connected to chassis. And they are maybe located so they act as a shield towards the sensitive parts. So maybe that is why they are located exactly like that. Interesting. I just had the bottom part off. And there's a connection on the bottom part on these two and not here on the top. So when the wire comes in here, it is actually connected to both of the two stages of this capacitor. And the last one is not connected. But look at that. we got leakage between these and it's not connected to anything. See, it's connected to chassis. Okay, so chassis to this. Oh, that's just the components in here we're measuring. Okay, so that is not leakage. Okay, so this is all perfectly fine, I would assume. And here's the bottom. Where we can see this. I don't understand why this last part here is connected to chassis. Maybe just to avoid it picking up or something. And then, oh, I see somebody 
did solder a little bit around in this area. I will go and get some schematics, but that looks to me like a power supply with those rectifiers and the power transistors and all that. So I bet this whole board here is the power supply. So we need to open here. I need to find the schematic and the, the checkpoints for the voltages. First of all, that is a good idea to just check the yeah all the voltages there good before we do any kind of investigations. At least I was told it's not working, so uh, let's uh, open here and do a little bit more visual. So the power supply is actually um, quite simple. It consists of a uh, old transistor circuit, a positive 30 volt and a negative 25 volt. And uh, here's uh, how I hooked this up. I prefer to put all my black wires to chassis and then my red wires to the positive and then negative because this way I also read positive and negative on my meters. This is just a yeah, just a habit. So let's try and power this up and see what happens. And plus 30 works, but negative 25 doesn't work at all. It's positive. And uh, let's try and look at the schematic. Maybe there is a easy way to understand the circuit and uh, let's see where can we go and have a look here. So here's the schematic of only the power supply. Let's start by looking at the top uh, half of it, a little bit less than half of it. Uh, at the top here, that is of course the positive 30 volt supply. And they are using the positive 30 as um, current uh, pull or drive signals and also for the reference to the negative 25. And um, why are they doing that? <laughs> well, I, as I see it, it is only to save one Zener diode. So maybe Zener diodes, they are made of gold and diamonds. And uh, of course they are very expensive, so you don't want to use more than only one. Uh, it's, you see the voltage um, sense system. It is marked here with the uh, dotted, uh, fat dotted line to the, to the negative part, uh, down to the control transistor. And obviously, if nothing seems to be working in the series uh, regulators or the output, then due to the fact that we are measuring from the uh, point between the positive voltage and the negative voltage, that is why we see the negative voltage being pulled up um, as we are seeing it, right? So that explains uh, a little bit of that. So now I want to go and measure uh, what kind of voltages we have. Uh, everything is neatly uh, noted here in the schematic. We can see the negative uh, 42 volts, the negative 25, and so on and so on, the different measurement points. Uh, and um, the circuit board is uh, also very nicely explained with all the designators visible. So that is uh, what I want to do. So here's what I did. This is Q7. I removed that one. It was very obvious somebody's been poking around in this area. And uh, also, yeah, quite a lot everywhere, right? But this one, Q7, is the current limit transistor. I try to make it a little bit easier to understand here what's going on. But there is no current. And if there's no current, how can this one be active and pull this signal away? It gotta be that transistor that's not working because we've got signal in here and those transistors seem to be working. So if we remove this transistor, all we, we don't have is a current limiter, but we still have normal operation as long as nothing pulls too much current, right? So without this transistor, I got 25 volt negative and of course, I got output, and we can change the amplitude, yada, 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 and we can change the frequency, yay. So, all I have to do is 
figure out and put in a new transistor and all that, and then trim it and test it and, and all that. Let's try and do this, uh, the low frequency times, uh, let's see if it can do, see, yes it can. Oh, look at that. A little bit of the, of crossover. Maybe if I'm driving it, yeah. So that is what it's doing. This is 50 hertz. And there is, of course, a loud peak. Seems to be locking to mains frequency, and that is because it is completely open. You see? Of course, nothing works at 50 hertz this, this way, I mean. So we need to put on the cabinet, and then we'll see if it can... If, yeah, of course, it can do 10 times faster. And here we can modulate it with 50 hertz if we want to. So after everything is up and running, I was doing a little temperature check. And because all those transistors, they appear to be isolated from the chassis. So of course I can touch them. So when I touched this one, it gave some really, really nasty sounds. And everything was just blinking and whatnot. <laughs> and I thought I was going to be electrocuted. But try and listen to this. the wires oh yeah look at that I found I found it look at that this transistor here is moving see it's not mounted correctly because I was okay so that is a problem <laughs> Maybe the pins can go and touch the metal here, and that is, of course, not the intention. All right, so this is, of course, the oscillator and the output amplifier and all that in this board. And I've been checking around for loose parts or anything that gets warm or stuff like that. I also cleaned those capacitors. They are... Normally coated with some really nasty, sticky uh, something. And uh, I normally just uh, dry the worst of it away so we can see what's going on. And all those capacitors, they got the date code 65. So it is really that old. It is a beautiful layout, of course. And the way that this works, I should probably put in a little block diagram from the manual. I found the manual on peel.dk and uh, the manual uh, shows of course a block diagram that is maybe a little bit confusing and it also shows this capacitor and the feedback and uh, and what not. And then I found the full schematic and then I could see that I have uh, misunderstood a little bit about this capacitor because there are indeed three capacitors in this one that are connected together in a little bit special way. So what appears to be one point here, it goes to this sensor pin here that is connected to all three caps. And those two here are correctly enough in parallel and that's the other wire. And then from that sensor point, we got the last capacitor to chassis. So that will be the three variable capacitors. So now I put on all the chassis parts and it's completely shielded. See, this is the times 100 range and that it will be 500, will be one kilohertz And 100 hertz so everything is perfectly nice and stable so let's try the 
times 10 range. Absolutely nothing. So that is something I need to play with. All other ranges works perfectly fine. You can of course crank it all the way to 10 megahertz like that. And is the readout super accurate as well? So, but look what happens on the output when I flip it. See, at the beginning, I actually do have. Yes, see. Is it a switch or is it a part that is defect? Well, well, more output. No. I should, of course, also add this little detail here to this video. Look at that. This is the times 10 range. This is 10 hertz. And then this is 100 hertz. So now the lowest range works. And this is, of course, because the lid is open. And there's another video that explains exactly this problem and exactly this solution. All he did was to disconnect this wire and then the slowest range worked. And there seems to be absolutely no side effects to any other things in this unit. So what the heck? That is the weirdest fix I've ever seen. But it really works. So if it works, it's not dumb.